Tonight, please welcome our special guest, the executive producer and uh, brother-in-law of Stanley Kubrick, Jan Harlan, and his love of his life, Christiana Kubrick. You, you, you two on that side, on the other side. Lovely Chris place, huh? Wonderful cinema. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, Christiana, I think before we even get to Eyes Wide Shut, can you tell us how you met Stanley Kubrick? He hired me. He hired me. <laughs> and that's how I met him. Really, this is not a very interesting story. I, uh, my agent called and I went to the studio in Munich and there he was and I got the job and I was very happy about that. And uh, then he saw me in the theater. I, he, I wasn't going to be filming for another six weeks because he shot in sequence. So um, he went to the theater I was at where I was playing uh, two days later, and that's when I really met him, and the rest is history. <laughs> you contributed your own artwork to Eyes Wide Shut in particular. Can you talk about the paintings of yours that are featured in the movie? Uh, in Eyes Wide Shut, I think there's some nudes and uh, uh, a lot of other paintings in the flat. He copied our own flat in New York because he wanted it a typical sort of middle class uh, New York flat and ours was just that and uh, so he copied a slightly upmarket version of that <laughs> and hung my paintings which we had at home everywhere because he thought that would at least he knew that would be authentic and um, yeah that's it and, and uh, he uh, was a fan of my paintings, which is good. <laughs> and, and you had no copyright problem. <laughs> Cheap, too. Mm. Now, Jan, this was one of um, Kubrick's longest gestating projects. When did he first encounter the, the, the book and, and first really want to make a movie of the story? Oh. In the 60s, he read the book and the, we bought the rights to Traumnovelle by Arthur Schnitzler in 1970. In fact, we had a contract with Warner Brothers that was the first Warner Brothers fixed contract to do a film about Traumnovelle in 1970. And then he t did not proceed because he found it too, just simply too difficult to get a script together, which he liked. He was his strongest critic on this, and he was very, very, very careful. And since it is a very internal story, and since everybody in the audience is an expert on the topic of jealousy and sexual fantasy, he found it very, very tricky to do this, and he gave up. What might interest you is that um, then, oh, maybe 15 years later, he actually wanted to do it as a black and white art house film with Woody Allen in the lead uh, as a uh, Jewish doctor in New York. It would have been a serious film. It would have been slightly different. But um, he, again, was, was, was not happy with his script, although he was extremely happy for a week of, of doing it like this. And uh, so we prepared other films. And uh, uh, finally, after we had prepared Aryan Papers and gave up on it for other reasons and AI. He offered AI to Steven Spielberg and did Eyes Wide Shut, which is Traum Novelle by Schnitzler. And I am very glad that he finally did it after 30 years and that he was so happy with the film and considered it his greatest contribution. Uh, the film has a problem. You have to see it twice. And that is a problem. The film was not at all successful in the beginning in, the, in Northern Europe, in America, in the English-speaking world. It was only successful in the Latin world, in, in France, Portugal, Spain, Italy, fabulous, and Japan, instantly. But not at all here. And now it's slowly coming back, and I'm convinced that a future generation will use Eyes Wide Shut like they use Ingmar Bergman and other great filmmakers to get a real good, serious look at uh, our time or, the, let's say, the second half of the 20th century. 
Can you talk about the casting of uh, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman? E- either, either one? Well, uh, Stanley at first, as you heard Jan say, wanted to do it in many different ways, even as a comedy at one point. And then as he thought about it all those years, he felt he had to strip away all the ordinary problems that couples have and choose a couple that have, they have no problems. They're good looking, they are happy together, uh, they are rich, they are nothing, they're, they're healthy, nothing is in their way that isn't of their own making. And there starts the story that he was interested in. And um, do you want me to go on about that? Well, uh, he was he, he he was not thinking of himself as a moralist, but he was very interested in the Schnitzler novel, really hooked on it. And I read that Schnitzler and Freud were friends and were two people at the time uh, who thought about m- morals outside the rules of religion and, and, and church things, and were very serious about this point. And uh, so Stanley really hooked in on this, and he was, uh, in his personal life, a, a, a sloppy person who could never find his other shoe, but he was extremely organized and self and very conscious of how he wanted to live his life and how he wanted to be and think about um, what he was worth as a, as a person. And he, he would, uh, you know, come down like a ton of bricks if he found you a moral or, or emotional slob. He really hated that. And uh, I was always interested how very firm his opinion was on all that at a time when people were extremely casual and uh, uh, he didn't didn't like that. At the same time, since he was very humorous and and, and hilariously funny, he made lots of jokes about it, but then uh, when he had decided to do it with a couple who had really no excuse to behave in the way they did, they had it coming and they made each other hugely unhappy. And uh, this is where the film moves in on the audience. Hard, cruel, embarrassing, intrusive, everything. It's not fun. And because every single one of us is addressed in ways we do not wish to be addressed. And it's very painful to go to all these places where we find ourselves incomplete. And what is it? worth to be loved by us? Are we, are we really improving somebody's life? What is our real worth? And um, he felt that the film addressed this very firmly and then he made that couple suffer. And I think that is the enormous value of the film. And the reason uh, that it was not popular was its potency. You know, people was squirming in the cinema, I think, that's not what I paid my money for. And then they couldn't stop thinking about it. So the film did not go away. Yan, did you want to talk about about the casting of of Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman? Well, uh, he he had never any alternative other than uh, Tom. He absolutely wanted Tom Cruise. We never thought of anybody else. And uh, then uh, he he saw Nicole Kidman in a film called... uh, to, uh, to die for yeah. and he realized how brilliant she was holding a close up for long takes and then and then he, he, he f- first of all i mean yeah it's absolutely correct what christiana said but that was already a second step because the initially he didn't want to have a couple mm. he thought it was a disadvantage but then he saw nicole after he had checked other actresses and he went to tom and said do uh, do you think i mean it would be a good idea and he said yeah we'd love to work together wonderful so and that's how it happened and then he very much homed in on what trust christiana said that actually really it's a great idea to have a couple that are so perfect and they have everything you know they are on the top of the world maybe that, that factor alone contributes to the story 
we 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 are left, you know, with his films, with his work. Uh, I wonder if you can tell us a bit about just him as a as a man, as a husband, and and what he was like. Yeah, when I saw the itinerary, it said extended <laughs> talk about, <laughs> and and uh, I really don't. Uh, Stanley was very private and really didn't want his personality uh, known about and uh, very shy about these things. So in no way would I um, betray and tell cute stories about Stanley. That's really awful. But uh, um, uh, I think, um, well, she would say that. I thought he was a very good person. And I had never met anybody even remotely like him. I also uh, felt I was now moving in with somebody who had a far bigger radar about the world than I ever had. And I was mesmerized, in addition to also being in love with him. And that's the story. Well, I want to thank you both. Yeah. I want to thank you both for, for being here, um, for all of your work and bringing his work through this exhibition that's been on the road for so long. It's finally here in, in Toronto. It's really a dream come true for me to be here with you and, and to, to be close to these films that I love so much. So thank you very much for being here. And, and everyone, enjoy Eyes Wide Shut in 35 millimeter. Yes, Jan. I have one more thing I want to say. Okay. The music you hear in the beginning was something that he had decided on many, many months before we shot the film. He always loved a waltz. He loved waltzes. But for this film, he needed a waltz in a minor key. That's what it is. And it's instant melancholy. Instant, but it's beautiful. And that's exactly the right music for this film. He was good at choosing music. <laughs> <laughs> he was very good at choosing the music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much again. It's such a pleasure. Enjoy, folks. Thank you.